For the week beginning July 26, we still do see that the global tropics hazards outlook is still showing that there should be at least a moderate chance of tropical cyclone development as we continue to see tropical waves approach the Caribbean over the next several days. Based on the latest run of the GFS model, the good news is that the GFS model is forecasting that the storm should be a little bit weaker than it initially anticipated in yesterday's run, where if we were to continue to move forward, we still do see that the GFS model does develop a relatively strong tropical wave somewhere in the main development, um, development region as early as Thursday, July, 20, um, July 20th, and if we were to continue to move forward with the forecast, we see that the low pressure system still exists but it's fairly weak and definitely a lot weaker compared to yesterday's run which is certainly good news however like i've been saying over my, the past several videos is still um this forecast is still very far out till this tropical wave approaches the caribbean so there's still a lot of time for the forecast to change we've seen drastic changes with um between each model run regarding the strength as well as the trajectory of this tropical wave as it approaches the caribbean because just two days ago we had the gfs model forecasting nearly a hurricane approaching the caribbean islands now we're seeing the gfs model still uh, forecasting a strong tropical storm but i wouldn't say this would be considered um a tropical wave that would be um that would be tropical storm status when it comes to wind speed however there's still a lot of time to iron out the forecast so the difference in today's run with the gfs model is that it's expecting a little bit more dry air than it initially anticipated which means that it's definitely gonna inhibit this storm from developing at least in this scenario because there's going to be overall a lot less convection and a lot less um less lift surrounding the center of circulation which would definitely inhibit this storm's chances of developing and we do see that this still does bring a decent amount of rain over the caribbean islands such as the leeward islands and this could bring uh an enhanced amount of rainfall by next week for puerto rico and as well as hispaniola but it's still um, but there's still a lot of time to really determine the strength and the trajectory of this storm system where I'll, I'll definitely keep you guys updated as it changes. Here's a look at the relative humidity forecast in the mid levels of the atmosphere provided from the GFS model. And we see that the biggest contention with this tropical wave um, that, may, that may keep it from developing into a tropical storm is the amount of dry air that's just to the northwest of this storm system. And we're seeing a pretty strong ridge, which is um, steering a lot of the Saharan dust as well as the stable air towards the main development region and that should certainly be a pretty big inhibitor and it, it, it's so uncertain how much dry air we'll see um it's gonna be open but it seems like the computer models are leaning a little bit more towards at least a pretty large area of dry air existing over the main development region so i'll say that it's unlikely we're gonna see this strengthen into a very powerful tropical cyclone i will say that at worst we'll likely see a tropical storm at least in the main development region that might not necessarily um that might not necessarily hold up beyond the caribbean where the forecast suddenly becomes a lot more uncertain once this storm system heads a lot further westward of the caribbean but at least for the main development region it seems like there's going to be just enough dry air to at least keep the storm from rapidly intensifying and the worst case scenario we'll see is a tropical storm but it seems like the most reliable computer models like the gfs and the european model have been leaning against that trend as of recent we're going to see if it keeps up that certainly may not keep up but it seems like there's going to be quite a bit of dry air so that's only something to keep in mind and we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how strong this ridge is how strong the northeasterly winds will be because the stronger the northeasterly winds will be the more dry air will move over the main development region th thus um weakening the storm's chances of developing so make sure to pay close attention to this ridge right over the northern atlantic to determine how much dry air will exactly move over the main development region still uncertain at this time but i think there will be just enough to keep this from potentially developing into a hurricane let's say 
Another reason why the GFS model is less confident of tropical cyclone development, at least based on its latest run, is due to the fact that it expects the storm system to move further southward and what that would mean is that it'll experience a stronger upper level winds associated with an upper level low that'll be located over the Caribbean and that would definitely inhibit this storm's chances of developing because it's more likely to encounter that strong wind shear just to the south of the Caribbean islands. And taking a look, we do see that by the time this storm approaches the longitude of, let's say, um, the St. Thomas and Puerto Rico area, that's where the wind shear really becomes strong, where we do see a pretty strong upper level low that's located right over the Cuba area, bringing a strong amount of wind shear. And that should be able to tear this storm apart if it were to encounter wind shear this strong as well as pretty much um, disperse a lot of that the air molecules and energy away from the center circulation thus in um, increasing the pressure along the surface and the wind speed will increase along the surface as well and that's what's expected so if this storm wants to have a higher possibility of developing it's definitely going to need to move northward to where it could avoid the stronger wind shear that would be associated with this upper level low but whether this moves northward or southward i find it very difficult for this tropical storm to be able to at least um, avoid the wind shear entirely so at least in some way shape or form it should deal with a decent amount of wind shear once this approaches the caribbean the question is how much and that really all depends on the trajectory of the storm system as well as the fact that this upper level low the strength will play a role as well that's still far from certain of course very far out into the future but i'll say that it's definitely going to need to strengthen quite a bit in the main development region to maintain its strength by the time it approaches the caribbean because it's likely the wind shear will greatly increase by the time it approaches that region so that's suddenly something that will probably be an inhibiting factor from this that will keep the storm from developing um, into much more than a weaker tropical storm Here's a look at the 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly from the GFS model. We do see that a big ridge is expected to dominate much of the northern Atlantic, which should steer this trough further westward, um, straight towards a westward direction. And um, unless we're going to see a weakening here, um, this storm would move southward and encounter more of that wind shear. And I'd assume that with a stronger ridge, We'll see more dry air than anticipated because of course associated with the ridge we see a lot more stability a lot more sinking air and that would definitely um that would definitely make the conditions more hostile for this tropical wave to be able to strengthen much more than the um, let's say a tropical um depression so that's something something to keep in mind as the storm approaches um further westward how strong this ridge will be because if it if the ridge is a little weaker then i'll say the chance is definitely higher that this will strengthen because there will be less stable air as well as the fact that it's going to be able to avoid the stronger wind shear that would be associated with the southern portion of the caribbean so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to this ridge over the next several days the European model is showing a different scenario where it wants to take a storm further northward. However, very similar when it comes to its strength, where the European model been persisting that the tropical wave will have little to no chance of developing into a tropical storm. However, still a lot of days ago, we see that the dry air just becomes too much for this tropical wave to handle. We see that on all sides, dry air is swallowing up this storm system, which is definitely I'm going to be uh, um, um, something that will prevent this storm from being able to have a good chance of developing. We need to see less dry air in the European model before we can change, um, before we could potentially see a forecast change from the European model. But the European model being very persistent on this idea and we could see the GFS model cave towards this idea as well especially um, based on the latest run where it's a lot more similar to the European model than prior ones which is definitely something we're going to take note of as the storm continues ahead further westward but whether or not this develops into a tropical storm you still should expect an enhanced amount of rainfall um, over the Caribbean by next week so definitely um, keep that um, in mind. So the Saharan air layer will definitely play a big role because if there's a lot of Saharan dust, that will definitely create a temperature inversion in the mid-levels of the atmosphere and prevent this storm from having enough of an unstable environment and enough lift 
for a tropical cyclone to develop and we do see that over the next several days the Saharan dust is expected to continue which is the reason why it's becoming a little bit more difficult to see that we're going to um, a tropical storm develop over the main development region but I'll definitely keep you guys updated regarding any changes because of course we know that the forecast models tend to change a lot especially when the forecast is beyond the five to seven day mark. So the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook hasn't acknowledged this tropical wave just yet. Um, it's likely that the National Hurricane Center won't acknowledge this tropical wave until much later in the future. We of course saw that with the global tropics hazards outlook, the hazard or at least the potential area where a tropical storm could develop has shifted a little bit further westward, closer to the Caribbean. And that's further and that's closer to the seven day mark and a little bit beyond the seven day mark to the point where the National Hurricane Center can't list this tropical wave as a possibility of having a chance of developing just yet so definitely keep so definitely keep checking up on this um, graphical trouble weather outlook I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we do see it within the next couple of days at the National Hurricane Center will like at least acknowledge the fact that we could potentially see development closer to the Caribbean but just wait a couple of days because of course um, the chance at which this trouble wave could develop is a little bit beyond the seven day mark Outside of that, however, we of course have Tropical Storm Dawn, which has maximum sustained winds around 40 miles per hour. And we do see that this storm system could uh, potentially approach um, the Newfoundland area of um, Canada, the extreme eastern portion of Canada. However, it's unlikely to directly impact you guys. I'll say that at worst, you should experience uh, an enhanced risk of gusty winds, maybe um, some rain showers as well. And of course, rough surf you should expect. So definitely stay out the waters um, for this weekend as Tropical Storm Dawn approaches you guys because you definitely don't want to underestimate the water um, even though the storm system it will be well off the coast of you guys most likely. So here are what the GFS ensemble members are stating at this time. We do see that compared to yesterday the ensemble members are showing a lot um, storm systems that are a lot weaker in general as they approach a Caribbean and we're seeing um, less than some members actually do want to develop a well-defined low pressure system so the good news is that the chance at least for today has lowered that we're going to see a tropical storm develop and impact the Caribbean but still a lot of days to go but I'll say the chance is a little bit less likely right now. The European ensemble members, however, are showing a different scenario, or at least a very similar to scenario to what they were saying yes, um, yesterday, where we do have some ensemble members taking a very similar trajectory as what the main um, European model is stating, and we do see some shutting it to tropical storm status. So this is at least something to be aware of. I'll say the further northward it moves, the higher possibility we could see this develop um, since it will avoid the wind shear and that would mean that there will be less stable air but still a lot of time to iron out the forecast but I'll say since the main European model is still not forecasting a tropical storm I'll say it's less likely at this point but still not out of the realm of possibilities. So here's my forecast in general when it comes to the potential of Tropical Storm Emily. The chance has diminished just by a little bit, but I'll still definitely at least be aware of this throughout the Caribbean islands. We know that these computer models change their forecast quite rapidly. And depending on how much dry air or wind shear will move over the Caribbean as well as the main development region, that will be key in determining if we're going to see Tropical Storm Emily this week or into early next week or we're just going to see a tropical wave impact the Caribbean islands with enhanced rainfall. I'll keep you guys updated, but that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.